Hey guys, Stephen from LOJ here, back again with John from PSI Conversion, and we're here today to talk about the uh, physical characteristics of a Gen 4 small block engine. And uh, again, this is uh, a follow-on to our Gen 3 physical characteristics video, and uh, the next video that will come out will be the LS2 specific video. But um, John, what are some of the defining characteristics that make a Gen 4 engine different from a Gen 3 engine? Okay, well the Gen 4 engine, um, first thing is that you notice is the cam sensors on the front of the engine, right on the timing cover, as opposed to behind the intake manifold going into the valley on a uh, Gen 3 engine. The second is the knock sensors, which are mounted low uh, on the side of the block on a Gen 4 engine, and they have two wires going to them, as opposed to a Gen 3, which has one wire for each knock sensor, and they're located um, basically in the valley pan underneath the intake manifold. Okay. Those are the two major differences. But from all the other bolt pattern perspectives, for instance, the oil pan bolt pattern, the motor mount bolt pattern, the transmission bolt pattern, everything that's swap related from a physical perspective is the same between a Gen 3 and a Gen 4. Yeah, they're both going to be the same. I mean, the intakes, the, uh, the, throttle, the throttle flange on a Gen 4 intake is going to have four bolts as yeah. opposed to three bolts on a Gen 3. Um, Really, that's, that's the major stuff that you have to worry about, other than the fact that one's 58X versus 24X, which we cover in a different video. Right. And then from a cylinder head perspective, everything Gen 4, again, except for we're leaving the LS2 out of this discussion, but all Gen 4 engines that are 6 liters and up displacement-wise will have a rectangular port head like an LS3. So an L76 out of a Pontiac G8, an LY6 out of a Silverado, which is a 6 liter iron block, um, the Obviously, the LS3 itself, L92, L96, L9H, they all have the yes, rectangular port heads. The, L, uh, the L76 Vortec Truck Max motor, which yep. is a different L76 than the L76 that's <laughs> in the G8. Um, and another th thing to understand, though, is also make sure if you do have an LS set of set of LS7 heads, you don't bolt an LS3 intake to a set of LS7 heads because yep. the angles are different. And uh, it will physically, I believe, bolt up, but you will have a major vacuum leak when you do it. Yep, yep. And then all 5.3 liter and 4.8 liter Gen 4 motors still retain the old cathedral port style head of the Gen 3 motors. That is correct. Okay. Correct. And I think that has a lot to do with the size of the intake valves on those rectangular port heads. I don't think they actually physically fit within the small bore of the 5.3s and 4.8s. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure. And I mean, the, you know, the, the rectangular port head is a great head. Uh, it's great on the intake side, the exhaust side, it's not so great. Um, but uh, the Cathedral Port, as we all know from the Gen 3 stuff, is a, is a really good head too. Yep, yep. And then, I guess some of the other physical characteristics that are present on some Gen 4 motors, but not all Gen 4 motors, would be uh, a VVT actuator, because they added variable valve timing on some, but not all Gen 4 motors. Correct. VVT typically is going to be, um, uh, you'll note that on the timing cover itself, there's going to be two connectors going to the ti into the timing cover. Uh, one will be your three-pin cam sensor. The other is going to be the two-pin for the actuator for the VVT. Okay. Uh, you got to be aware that the um, VVT pretty much was only available on automatics. Okay. Um, not all automatics had VVT, but no manuals had VVT. Okay. Uh, and again, we're talking, you know, 09 or mid-07 all the way up to 2013. They started, towards the end of that run, they started trying to put VVT on everything because because there are advantages to it, especially right. from a fuel economy standpoint. Now, from a physical swap perspective, the VVT actuator makes that front timing co cover so much bigger that the only water pumps that will clear that timing cover are water pumps that use a truck offset accessory drive. So you can't retain VVT in your swapped car and expect to run Corvette offset accessories. If you want to do that, you have to delete the VVT and switch to a non-VVT timing cover which not everybody knows, but it's important to keep in mind depending on packaging constraints you have in your conversion. Correct, yeah. correct. And, and if you're going to, you know, let's say you do have a VVT set up and you don't want to run the VVT, let's say because you're running a manual trans behind it, you don't want to swap the cam, something like that, you can not run and just run a computer tune without VVT turned on. And for the most part, you're not going to notice a difference when it comes to power. I mean, there's going to be slight changes um, in 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 power levels and, and things of that nature, but overall speaking, it's it's going to run normal. I mean, yeah. we've t we've tested that extensively just to make sure that there wouldn't be an issue for customers. I think the biggest advantage of the VVT is low end torque production. It helps bring the power curve in sooner. It's not like a high end power sure uh, advantage type thing. And then 
I guess the other physical difference that you would also find on Gen 4 motors, but not Gen 3, is DOD. That is correct, or AFM as, as, as it's known. So, so that's it, displacement on demand or active fuel management, depending which acronym you're using. So Correct. So uh, that you'll find an easy way to tell if it has DOD um, is to look behind the intake manifold. There's going to be a six-pin connector coming uh, basically in from the back of the engine. It's like a right angle sensor that goes down into the, um, the valley cover. And what DOD does is it shuts off cylinders at certain uh, time frames. Uh, one thing we do not offer is a, DD, a DOD application in our harness. Now, to be, to be specific, what it means is there's no connector for the DOD. It doesn't mean you have to change your lifters. It doesn't mean you have to change all of that all of that hardware to make it run, it's just not going to turn the DB, DOD on. It's right. going to stay in eight-cylinder mode. Some people will call and ask, well, why can't I run DOD? Um, the reason being is there are, first of all, the lifters aren't, are not are known and prone to failure. Yeah. Um, the other issue is that DOD, in order to work properly, is you have to have a host of emissions items, uh, including catalytic converters, rear O2s, and things of that nature, uh, because that's how GM programmed the computers. Now, you can turn it off. Uh, some people, I'm sure, will say, well, I can plug it in and it, and it works and that's fine, but you're not really going to see a huge fuel economy uh, advantage to running it. Okay. As far as I'm concerned, um, it's, it's pretty useless. If you have a DOD engine, there's no real reason to run it. Uh, if you're going to change a cam, absolutely, you're going to pull those lifters out and put an aftermarket set of lifters uh, into the engine so that way you don't have a motor or a, a hardware failure later on. Right, right. I think that that does just about wrap up all the physical differences. Off the top of my head, I can't think of any others um, that separate a Gen 4 from a Gen 3 motor, at least from the physical configuration of the engine. No. No? No. All right, guys. Well, I appreciate you tuning in, and uh, there'll be more of these videos coming up. Thanks.